So we can do this and do this. Some of you will do this. Okay, I found something interesting here. So just to let you see, we can decide whether this is a valid argument or not. There's a lot of implication here. Okay, uh, Q&A section, anyone have any question today uh, regarding the previous lecture tutorial or uh, any question on the content? Just to remind you, we will do the quiz during the uh, start of the uh, tutorial time, the third hour. Quiz about fifteen minutes. Uh, this week I have six students go to my office hour, which is double last week, which is good. But I think I have none of you come to my office hour. Hope you are doing okay. Actually, yesterday there's a Nobel Prize release for physics. Anyone know about this? Nobel Prize physics. No? Yesterday was about application in quantum information, quantum computer, where they use the quantum entanglement in quantum mechanics. So once two particles are entangled, when you release them far away, they will 
from one particle, you can learn about what the other particle are doing. So they can somehow pass the information. Yeah. So how how good about how good is this uh, quantum uh, entanglement thing? Is you don't need optic fiber to transfer your information. You just need light and air. Quantum information. So this is what they did in the front. Actually, I wanted to show you uh, this one. Uh, I think it's reporter asking the question. You guys interested or not? Interested or not? On yesterday press conference. You want to see? Huh? You want to see? Okay, more than half raised him than I showed you. There's one interesting question by the reporter during the Nobel Prize. If you want to see, you can raise your hand. If more than half, then I will show. If not, then we will start the class. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I also feel different today. Should I, should I call the. <laughs> okay. But in the meantime, uh, if you. If you want to see, we can watch a short bit. If not, then we start the lecture. Anyone want to see or not? Huh? <laughs> not see, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so do you, need, do you need subtitle or not? Subtitle. Huh? Need subtitle? I think only Facebook version one got subtitle. YouTube don't have. Can I just? Hello? Hello? Uh, speaker, uh, the mic got problem. Bass, bass, bass too loud. Bass. Ah, ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Is it? Hello? Hello? Still loud? Okay, never mind. Okay, I just use my own voice. Uh, maybe I show you a little bit what the Nobel laureate did, and then I show you a fun part of the reporter asking the question about content teleportation. Okay. Maybe I show you. So this is the really frontier quantum information. Ah, hello? Ah. Is it better now? Hello? 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 Is it better now? No. No, no, no. No. Hello? Hello? Testing? Testing? Better now? Hello? 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 A bit softer already. Huh? The base is softer, but the, the whole sound also softer. <laughs> Hello, 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 hello. How about now? Okay, no? louder, louder a bit, louder a bit. Hello, 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 hello. How is it? How is it? How is it? Okay, a bit louder, a bit louder. Hello, 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 hello. How about now? Are you guys okay? Okay, from the back, okay. Okay or no? Okay. No, okay. Louder a bit. Hello? 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 Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Uh, where? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, wait, let me see how to get this now. Uh. 
Let me try. Uh. Let me try the sound. If not, then. No sound. Yeah. Hello. How about I use mic? I try to use mic. Open the eyes of that physical the bell of the studies of bell states. And yeah, the experiments performed by Clauser and Aspect. Open the eyes of the physics community to the depth of Schrodinger state and provided tools for creating and manipulating and measuring states of particles that were entangled, although they were far away. And physicists now started to understand that entanglement and bell pairs is a quantum resource that you can use to achieve amazing new things. And it's no time here to even start to tell you that, that story. I will just give you one example, which is picked. Yeah, this is the example of the, the how you pass the quantum information. By the third of this year's uh, Lorraine's quantum side. So to understand this, you have to know that the goal of the quantum mechanics today is to build the quantum network. What is that? The quantum network is a series of nodes. And these nodes should be able to communicate via quantum entanglement. In these nodes, you can have quantum devices like encryption devices. How do you build such a network? It's difficult and it's brittle. If you send it for an optical fiber, it very easily gets destroyed. So you need some new trick. And just an amplifier won't work because amplifiers destroy and tangle. Uh, so here is the trick the method that I'm consigning you came up with. It's called entanglement swapping. You have two of these bell pairs like this. One of the particles here, one, and the other four goes far away from each other. The two other comes together. Here, you make a measurement so you entangle particle two and three. And then magically, one and four becomes a tangle, although they had never been close to each other. Wonderful. So now you can think of doing it in a chain. You do one, you do another, you do a third, and that you can build up the next. So another method to get long range entanglement is not to use optical fibers, but to send just light through the air. And I just give you one spectacular example of that, this. And that was in 2018. Uh, there was an intercontinental quantum link set up using the Chinese Nikius quantum satellites between the group of Yang Mei Han, the Academy of Science in China, and Pidanto Sign English Group in Austria over 
over 7,600 kilometers. Pretty amazing. And now we are at the forefront of current research. And I will just end with a few comments. Yeah. So today, so we there's some uh, collaboration between China and Europe using this contact information so for the satellite. That the strange world of entanglement. Uh, and also, they touched on the topic on quantum teleporting. Quantum teleport. But it's not about teleporting you or matter or some objects, but it's just the teleport of information. Okay. And then I found this. Uh, Reporter, very funny. We we can see. And I think she got them. Congratulations, Professor Denninger. So this is the video speaking from uh, Geneva Observatory. Uh, maybe... So my question is, uh, what happens if we send an entangled particle into a black hole? Okay, so this you guy, know, this guy know. asked about entanglement. If you entangle two particles, okay, so both of them carry uh, information that can encode it. Um, they are related. If you send one of them to black hole, what happens? But uh, the professor can't answer because he said he is not doing black hole. So black hole is a very large uh, gravity uh, objects, but the photon they research on is a very small particle. So once it's quantum mechanics, one is uh, general relativity. Okay, I think it's after this guy. After this guy. Anneli Miegner on, Swedish TV4. Congratulations on the prize. Yeah, uh, this, I this, would like to this fill woman. in Thomas von Heines, question from BT. And when you were talking about teleportation, when I think of teleportation, I think teleportation of maps, like a person is jumping from here to there in different galaxies. But you said teleportation of information only. Is that correct? So there is no mass involved here. Well, actually, you know, the important, this is a very good question, actually. Uh, and I, uh, the point is actually that then it does not matter which part uh, uh, something is composed of. For so example, if I exchange all the, all the carbon uh, atoms in my body with the carbon atoms in somebody else's body, I'm still the person. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's inf important is the information. What is, how is the object constituted? How are these all these constituents uh, arranged together? That is what defines individuality and so not the matter of situation. So you mean that in the very, very future, like maybe ten thousand years from now, you might be able not to actually jump to another galaxy but have uh, yourself uh, building up again from different um, different material at another place, like the same that we are uh, sending TV now, for instance, that, that you get. Well, first, I might say that, that I'm not, I don't think that I've experienced anything in 10,000 years. So that's a different question. Uh, the teleportation of, of, of uh, people is today is the same kind of science fiction as it always was. So, so this is not science fiction. This is not in my eyes. It's not the first time. Let's see her face. <laughs> not happy. <laughs> not happy. Not happy on your professor's answer, the face. <laughs> okay. Okay, we'll start the class today. If you want, you can go and watch online. Okay. Yeah, let's do let's start the start. 918. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh before we start, right, this one is the previous section not. I think someone found my mistake. So I shouldn't distribute around this line because this is an all and all. I can only do associativity. 
So instead, I need to uh, distribute here, okay? And then keep going on. I will update the lecture notes later, okay? You also can try yourself first. This is on last week tutorial, 3.10. Okay. okay, today we will learn a series, a different method, how to prove your statement, how you're going to prove yourself. Uh, when you make a statement, how you're going to prove yourself, how you're going to prove to the others that what you say is correct. Okay. Maybe sometime, uh, some for some people, it's new for you. So make sure you try. If you don't understand, should ask you. So first of all, I want to introduce some terminology. So an axiom or a postulate is the statement that assumed to be true. Okay? So this, we need to start, start from somewhere. The theory need to start from somewhere. Start with a bunch of um, assumption, which we think it is true. Axiom might not necessarily exist or correct. Okay, I use the word correct mean, um, how the nature should be okay true or false is we reserve for logic okay whether it, it it happens or doesn't happen true or false but correct or not in the nature we're not sure okay mm. so for example um so for example if you know that if you learn that uh newton gravity right so newton uh described gravity using the radius and mass but but it can't uh, explain the orbit of Mercury. So Einstein come up with a general relativity with an axiom, okay? Axiom saying that the light of speed doesn't change. But whether or not in real life, in reality, the light of speed change or not, we don't know, okay? So we assume something is true and then we build a theory. And yeah, okay. So next, theorem. So theorem is, a, is shown to be true as a consequence of the axiom. Okay? Use the axiom and then prove that a statement that you make is true. A proposition is more or less a theorem, but it's a less important one. Okay? It's, you can see them as the same type of object. And then a proof, a proof is a series of proof, uh, to, a series of steps to prove that the theorem is true. Okay? And then lemma, lemma is also a theorem, but it's uh, also less important. But usually lemma, we will use it when we use it to prove another theorem, okay? So the line chart will be something like this. So axiom, this one is assumed true. Ah, again, come again, come again, I'll see here. This table, the main neck two step. Back to the okay. Okay. Yes. okay. So assume true. Okay. So we can uh, prove a theorem by using proof. Okay. Also, we can prove a uh, proposition. Okay, and then I should use this logo. So before going to theorem, we might pass through the okay. Proposition also can go to theorem. Maybe it's something that is more um, important so, or strong result. Um, and then my proof corollary. Okay, corollary. Corollary is a statement coming from theorem. Okay, so easily follow from theorem. We call it a corollary. Okay, 
And then conjecture is something that uh, you think that is true, but unproven. So conjecture is unproven. It may be true, may be false. Okay. So sometimes you test a value, test a few values, you think that hey, it's correct. So you conjecture that there's a statement to be true, but you just conjecture it, then you take a picture. Some conjecture is wrong, some conjecture is right. Okay. Okay. So we will, today we will learn a few types of proof through examples. Okay. For examples. Okay, any question on this one? No? no? Okay, we will do our example based on number theory. So we work on integer. Okay, let's get a uh, definition on integers. So, what's an even integer? So, an integer is even if there is another integer such that n equals to 2. Okay. Is up. Okay, then this okay such that n equals to two k plus one. Okay, to convince you, uh, let you see some example. For example, six equals to two times two. Okay, three is the k. Uh, for example, minus seven is what two times three. Mi minus three. Minus three. Ah, minus one cannot because it's not in my phone. Okay, so I maybe need to pick uh, minus four. Plus one, yeah. Okay. So you can always write it in this form. Okay. So this is definition. So I assume it is true for now. It's like axiom. Okay. Okay. So first one easy is a uh, proof by direct proof. So you directly prove it. No need to use some any logic. I mean twisted logic, just a direct one. So for example, let's try to prove this theorem. Theorem. Let n be even integer. And minus one is on. So yeah. So whenever you want to prove a statement, you need to understand it first. Okay. So let n be an in even integer. So that means this integer is in this form. Then n minus one is odd. So you need to show that n minus one is in this form. Okay. So proof. Take M uh, uh, okay, take M to be an okay. So let before before doing this, let me apply what we learned last time. So this is equivalent to proof that for every m in z, m even implies m odd. Okay, this this is just translating translating the sentence here. So here is the universal uh, generalization because m is any number, and then m odd and even implies m odd. Then, okay, this is. Applying what we have learned last two weeks. Okay. So take so since we want to check for all m, last week we said that we have to test for every m. So we start with any m as an integer, even integer. Okay. And then we want to show that and is odd. Okay. Okay. First, uh, first note that m equals to two k sub k. 
Okay, this is by definition, right? By definition, yeah, definition. Yeah. Okay, so then we compute m minus one, right? So two k is m become two k, okay? But this is two k minus one, right? So how am I writing it in this form? Anyone got any idea? How are you going to move into a form that two times the number passed on? Hmm? Any idea? Okay, I'll give you two minutes you can discuss with your friend. Any idea on how to move it into this form? Any idea? I think there's a kin we look here. <laughs> we did a kin here. Any idea? Any idea? No? No? Okay. So we can do like 2k minus 2 plus 2 and so on. Okay. And then what do we do? So 2k minus, minus 2 plus 1. Okay. How about the minus 2 there? We can factorize it. Then it is a form of two times the uh, integer plus one. Okay. See, this is what we did just now, actually. Okay. Everyone following? Okay. Which mean can and so means one. Okay. So this one is direct proof, meaning you start from the assumption and then you prove your result. Okay. Start with the assumption, prove the result. Okay. Any question? Any question? Huh? Okay, next. Okay, next. Same, uh, same uh, statement. We want to prove by contradiction. Okay, for this, uh, I introduce an axiom. So axiom one. Every integer is either even or. or. Okay, note that this statement is a uh, exclusive or. So uh, an integer cannot be both even and odd. Either even or odd. Okay, exclusive or. Okay, theorem, same theorem. Let M be an even here. Then M minus one is odd. Okay, true. 
Okay, for contradiction, we need to first assume the result is false first. Okay. okay, for now, you just listen, follow what I'm doing, then later I will tell you the general uh, theory. So suppose M is even. Okay. Suppose, okay, this is the, this is the assumption. M, M minus one is even. Okay, so this is the assumption given. And then this, I suppose, M minus one is even. Okay, suppose the result is false. Okay. Then, M minus one is, because M, Minus one is even, right? So I can write m minus one as two times. Okay. Okay. But m equals to what? Two k plus one, which is which is odd. So you assume that uh, m is even at first, but you prove that m is odd. So we reach a contradiction. Okay. So what do you have now? So actually you have a P implied Q statement that you want to prove. Okay. So you assume P. Okay. Then you also assume not Q. Okay. And in the end, you get not P. Right? So I list it down here. So you got a P implies Q. Okay. You got P. You assume not Q. Okay, assume not Q is the key for uh, proof by contradiction. Assume something that the result is false. And then you obtain P. Oh, sorry, not Q. So together you get not Q implied uh, P and not Q. Okay. Remember, we proved that P and not P is what? Contradiction, right? So this, this, this guy is always false. Remember the truth table. So this guy is always false. So for the whole statement to be true, this one has to be true false. False. Okay. So that's why you can get Q. Okay. Okay. Not Q is false, so that you can get Q. Okay. This so so you can prove that this is. This is contradiction in the logic. Okay. So if you so yeah, so you assume that the result is false and then contradict what you started with. This is proof again, proof by contradiction. Any question or not? No. Feel free to stop me again. Okay. Uh, I asked the other class why they have no question. Some people feedback to me say they don't know how to ask. Yeah. Is this your huh? Your case? Uh? Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. I can solve this problem, okay? So if you don't know how to ask, right, you just point to me. Then I will help you formulate your question. Okay. You just point to me. This one, this one. Then I will ask a lot of questions to you. Then I help help you to formulate your question. Okay. So so do you have question? So I ask again, do you have question on this question? If you have, then you raise up your hand and then you point if you don't know how to ask. Do you have question? Huh? Okay, if you have question, you just point if you don't know how to ask, okay? Just point to the place you think I'm confused and I don't know why I'm confused, you just say. And then I'll try to see what is going on but the thing is you don't don't keep it to yourself you must ask them. okay after this page we will stop a bit longer and then we'll see if any one of you got question okay so Proof by contrapositive. Okay, remember the contrapositive P implies Q, and then we will have uh, not Q implies not P. So we start from not Q. Okay, start from not Q. 
and then we prove that not p. Okay, so similar to uh, similar to proof by contradiction. So suppose n minus one is even. Okay, so suppose q is false, and then we want to show WTS. I want to show n is oh okay. Not Q implies not P. Then what do we have? N minus one is equal to two K. Okay, for some K. So M is what? Two K plus one, which is hot as desired. Okay. So I start from not Q and then I prove that not Q. And so this is the contrapositive. In general, we have P implies Q, and then assume not Q, prove that not P, so that we got this not Q implies not P. So which means we have the whole statement. Okay, uh, try digest, and then any question you can ask. Yeah, yeah. Say, say again, say again. Yeah. Okay. Clear how to do? You may understand. Okay. So, okay, you mean, you mean you start from assumption and then working and then conclusion. Conclusion. You mean you don't know how this part of oh, this is inference part? You mean you don't know how the logic goes? Somehow, yes, okay. Uh, you mean for contrapositive or all of this? Contradiction, contrapositive. <laughs> Huh? Oh, okay. okay, okay, so okay, okay, good, okay, okay, so I'll uh, repeat again. So, okay, maybe I do a chart, do a chart, okay, do a chart here. So, one way is proceed by contradiction, one way is proceed by contrapositive. Okay, so in your mind, you should have some implication sentence. A uh, proposition or statement inside your mind. P implies Q. Okay, that you want to prove. Okay, P implies Q. So, for contradiction and contrapositive, both you should start with not Q first. Okay, both you start with not Q. Assume the result is false. Okay, but in contradiction, we have P. Okay, we have P. And then, and then, uh, how to say? Okay, I think I should split, I should write some not here. So this one is what you assume, okay? And then, prove uh, not P, okay? And then here is proof, also same, proof, Two, okay. So the difference between contradiction and contrapositive is contra contradiction you still assume your assumption. Okay, assumption is still with you, but contrapositive you don't need this assumption anymore. So contrapositive is shorter, so you just get not Q implies not P. Okay, which is logically equivalent to P. Remember? So this is done. Okay, but here contradiction is because this contradict with P. Okay, so you will get Q, which is what you want. You want to start from P and then you get Q. Okay, is it okay? Yep. 
it will be too young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because your goal, your goal is to prove that if you have P, you must have Q. Okay. So this one proved that if you have P, you got Q. This one proved that the false statement is true. So it's true. Ah, uh, yeah. We also have some uh, example uh, tutorial to try also. A any more questions on this one? Yeah, maybe first time you hear it, it's a bit confusing because you haven't tried it out. I'm also confused. Also. So once you get hands on and then become your second nature, yeah, second nature. This is not used in mathematics, uh. this is used in daily life. Yeah, if you want to prove some guys is wrong uh, or some something is correct, uh, you can use this uh, logical reasoning. So you say, hey, the thing you say contradict with what you started with. So, because sometimes the people confuse me, or they get very sad because of something. But you say, hey, this one sound doesn't sound right. So they, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So before we go to a break, let's do this uh, classic proof by contradiction that I promised you last time again. Okay. So, theorem. Proof. Okay, if it is theorem, I don't, don't, don't need to say proof, right? Square root two is irrational. Okay. Okay, proof. So how is, Contradiction. So contradiction, right? So we uh, we need to assume not the result. So suppose square root two is rational. Okay. Since it is rational, then I can write it as a fraction, m over n. M n with m n in z. And of course, when you write into the fraction form, you can cancel the common factor, right? So M N F. No. Yeah, for example, like two over four, we can write it as one over two. Okay. We can remove the all the factor. Okay, let's see the magic trick here. So two equals to M squared by M squared. Okay. Hence, two n squared equals two n squared. Okay, so far still high school. Huh? So it follows that m squared is two times an integer. So it's e one. Okay. So there's actually a lemma here that you can prove since m square is even m must be even okay there's a there's a maybe 30 second proof here you know what's the proof since m square is even m must be even Uh, should I let you? Maybe, maybe I don't want to check the time. So, okay. So to prove this is an exercise you can do. So use contra positive. Okay, which means show that if m odd m square must be odd. Okay, odd is like two k plus one, right? So you can imagine if you expand it up, the plus one is still there. And then you should be able to manipulate the number inside. Again, this is exercise. So m equals to 2a or something because m is equal. Then you can substitute 
again, 2n squared equals to 4n squared. Okay, n squared equals to 2n squared, which means what? Which means n squared is even. And consequently, n is even using the lemma again. Using lemma again. Okay, so you prove that m is even, n is even. Okay, which means they have common factor. So contradict your. I repeat again, this implies M and N S M M common factor two contradicting the assumption that they Okay, so 950. So you can think about it during the rest, or you can just rest and then we will come back. And then if you have questions, you can ask at 10 o'clock. Yeah,这个是属于嗯呃先正常。我没有写get哦，我没有写get，没有是assume，两个都是assume。对对对对对对。这个如果是P正Q的话，我是正P到呃非Q是错误的，然后它就可以P到Q是正确的，是这个意思
true also because this is given i assume it is true also okay so it's like this it's like this so the logic is like this i start from p i walk 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 i got not q i walk 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 and then i get not p off then this means this 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 part is contradictory. Uh, this part contradict. Uh? So this should be this one is false. Uh? Why contradict? Because you say got p ma p is true ma p is true. Then not p must be false. Remember? Yeah. So that means something in the middle of the path is wrong. So this path is this this not q is wrong. You get it? You get it? So to fill the consequence, I got P, yeah, and I assume that P is true. Yes, and to yes. prove the contradiction, I first assume not Q. Yes, and I after proving, I got not P as yes. yes. my conclusion. Yes, so if not P is true, then P must be false. Yes, whole part is contradiction. Yeah, so not Q is false, then I got Q. Yes, very yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay. This is what? This is what? Uh, this is like formally tell you why this imply you can get Q. Just now I'm just verbally tell you that. Okay. That means the middle part is wrong. So not Q is false. So you get Q. This is what? Uh, Technically, this is technically what is going on. So you got not Q in the middle of the path. You have P, you have not P together. So this this thing is contradiction, right? Remember P and not K. So this is false. Okay. But the whole thing is what you what you build up, right? So this whole thing should be true, right? You get what I mean? The implication, the implication is true. Okay, now your mind, right? True and false uh, is not correct or wrong. True and false is whether happen or not. Okay, so this is true because it's what you step by step going, right? So if this is false, this has to be false to get true, right? Because true, false, false, right? So, yeah, huh? mm, For false, true? So, there's only one way. False, false, true. So, not Q is false. So, not Q is false. Q is true. So, you get Q. True, false is false. The only way to get true. Yes. Not, not Q to be false, which is, Q which is Q. Q. Yeah. Right. This is the former, former thing to say that, uh, the the thing you go through is false. Ah, uh, as well. Again here. Here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah huh? Okay. Yeah. So maybe you got new insight. Is it? So. Uh, no, I I just don't remember. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So. The first and beginning is. Assume your result is false. Okay, and then you work from there. You get not P. Okay, assume your assumption also. And then these two contradict each other. And then this is false. Which part? Huh? Which part? Which part? Which part? Like, first we assume uh, Q is false. Yeah, we assume Q is false. Yeah. We assume P is true. We assume P is true. Yeah. Correct. Right. Yeah. Assume Q is false. P is true. Yeah. Correct. Right. This whole thing will be false. Because Q is false. Because Q is false. Yeah. P is true. Q is false. The whole thing is false. No. 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 Q is true, 
Wait, what are you trying to say? Uh, Q is for. Can you explain again just now the, the, the flow, of the, flow of this thing? Well, first, first we assume uh, Q is. So we assume Q is for. Then not Q is true. So not Q imply P. Okay, to P. So it's not Q is implies by E and not E. Now, we're going to prove that who means it doesn't fall the seeds, the means it falls the one. Then the bench me all the falls, but I guess not E. So you tell me not Q is in the tongue, it's in your Q. Okay, I think I know what you're trying to say. Okay. I was the one, yes. Yeah, not so cool. Yeah, very hot though. <laughs> Why? Uh? Is, is the aircon off? Okay. Okay, let me address the, what's your name? Vivian. Uh? Okay, let me address the Vivian question. So Vivian, Vivian, are you asking that uh, if I have this, if I have this is true, let me color it differently. So if this is true, this is color red. If this is true, then this imply this is false, right? Huh? Because because what? Because P implies Q is not P or Q. So not not P implies Q is P and not Q. Correct. Is this your confusion here? Uh, no, uh, I created my own question. Uh. Like this. Is it? Oh, you go back and think. Okay, I create a new question. <laughs> okay, I don't want to trouble myself. If someone got this question, then we will discuss again. <laughs> okay. Okay, any 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 question on this this thing or not? And the square root two contradiction one. Okay, I think in your mind, uh, in your mind, right? True or false, uh, uh how to say? Okay, I don't want to say too much. Okay, maybe when the time comes, we can discuss more. Okay. So if not, uh, we keep going. Uh, keep going. Okay. To, uh, to this to this chart, right? Maybe I add the direct proof as well. So direct proof. Okay. You assume. You assume P, and then you get Q. So you get. Mm, okay. So this is the. So okay. So to avoid confusion, I add assume here as well. Okay. Assume these two, then prove this, assume this, okay. assume. Okay. Assume proof, assume proof, assume proof, assume proof. Okay. Okay. Then next. Okay. Proof. By cases. Okay, the next one is proof by cases. Those deep proof. Okay, let's prove that if n is integer, 
10 square is going to be that. So this is, uh, if you want to apply the predicate logic, last time we learned, this is equivalent to, for every n as an integer, n square greater than n. Okay? So since we want to show it for all n, so we need to take any n, right? Suppose n is here. Okay. We want to show WTS. I want to show n square. So suppose we break into three parts. So integers is either zero. Okay or either greater or equal to one, or either less than equal to minus one, right? Okay, this one. Okay, when n equals zero, you get, Zero square, greater than zero square, which is true. Next, we get what? One, we can multiply n on the both side, right? Okay, but still reserve the order. So I'll multiply n on both sides. Okay, then n square equals to n. Okay, so next. So n square is what? Remember last time we did n square is always positive. Okay, so that's positive. Positive is greater than minus one, which is greater than equal to Okay, maybe you got one question. You say, hey, this one is strictly, eh? this one is greater or equal. Never mind, because this is all right. So as long as one is true, then all the whole statement for all is true. So it's, I can uh, conclude that n square is greater or equal to n as well. But in this case, we also have equal case. So that's fine. For everything, we can say that n square is greater or equal to n. Any, any last? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do I understand? The last bit one? This one? Which one you don't understand? This one? This one you understand? Right? Yeah. Stop it. Just see this side. Okay. Yeah, just swap, 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 um, swap position. Okay. Any other confusion? Or any confusion? Please ask, uh, then others can benefit also. Everyone following? Following? So, so next one is the assistant proof. Okay, let's count how many proof we have now. So this one is the one, this one is the two, this one is the three, then this one, four, five. Okay, assistant proof, I think we also encounter it last week, just found an element to prove the statement. Okay. So for example, this, this theorem here. So let's get two real number out, and then one is greater than the other. Then we want to prove, okay, since this is a theorem, so then this, uh, 
number x that is by a equal to x again maybe i give you two minutes to think how to get this x you can discuss with your friend how to get the x Okay, any breath? So, breath mind. What's X? Ah. Hey, same answer as me. Consider X equal to A plus B over 2. Okay, how to show this? So, huh? You know how to show? Do you know how to show? No, do you know how to show? No? no? Okay, okay. If you know, then I just let you teach this one. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, consider this. And then I want to show that A plus B over 2 less than B and greater than A. Okay? So, so just play around with this number. So, 2A is there. So, how? So, so this one is a plus a, right? So a plus a is, is, it, is a plus a. Huh? Right? How about the other side? The other side should be the same. Yeah. So a plus b. Okay. Okay. So in in the real proof, this is just working. Okay. This is working. Okay. I make some mark uh, here. This is working. So in real proof, it's better for you to write from bottom to up. From bottom to up. Okay. So let me write this is here. Real proof steps. So in real proof, you should go from your assumption to the top of your uh, result that you want. So example, so example here. So you should say since a less than b, a plus a is less than a plus b. And then 2a is less than 2 plus b. A is less than b. Yep. Okay. So you should write for the other one. And then see me similarly for similarly for yeah. hence, and then you should write the conclusion. And there's this okay. But this is not the other answer. You can try maybe three over three over four. Okay, you just need to find one x. Okay, next one. Next, the last proof, the sixth one that I'm going to introduce today. So, it's the proof by induction. But, by the way, this one is in the 5.1 in your book. 
to turn the refer. I add it in for this part. So this one I think is the most useful for coding, I guess. For coding, when you write the loops, the loops have to run for forever, forever end. So if you want it to be true, check your code, you need to use this induction. Or you just run it and then you make a bug and you don't know where to solve it. Okay, so let's see how this go. I show it show it using examples. Huh? So let's say we want to prove this formula here. So one plus two to the power n for different n, and then this is just two to the power n plus one. Okay. So in prints, uh, in practice. In practice, maybe you will check it one by one, right? So maybe you check it one by one. You will say when n is a zero, and then it's one, one is equal to two to the one plus one, zero plus one, I mean. So now it's one, it's correct. So how about one plus two? One plus two is two to the power one plus one equals to what? Four minus one is three, so it's correct. Right, and then you keep going. Okay, you keep going. And then, but you can't show it forever, right? So you can't show it forever. So there's a proof method here. So the proof go from, go by this, okay, proof. So the base case, you start from the base case, okay? So in this case, the base case starts from non-negative, so it's greater than equal to one. So it's n equals zero. Then you check n equals zero, and then you check that it is true, which is true. Okay. And then second, so there are three steps here. So first, base case, second, uh inductive case, uh, in, no no inductive uh, hypothesis. So let's write down. So inductive hypothesis. Okay. So suppose one plus two plus two n. Sorry, plus two plus up to two n is equal to two n plus one minus one is two for n equals k. Okay. For some k. Okay. This is inductive hypothesis, and then next step is inductive step. Okay, inductive inductive step is we want to prove it for the next one, k plus one. Okay, so let's see. So we want to check it for two to the k plus one case. Not that this case goes through the two to the k case, right? So you add, add up to k first, and then you add the last term. So in the middle term, you can apply the inductive hypothesis, right? Because you assume that this one is true for n equals to k, right? So you can apply the inductive hypothesis by inductive hypothesis. Okay. Then this is what this is two times two k plus one minus one, which is two to the k plus one plus one. Okay. So you see. So you replace here with k plus one, and then here with k plus one, and then this is what you got. This is what you want, okay? As designer, okay? So the logic here is, you assume the previous step is true, and then you use the previous step to prove the next step is true, okay? So that means uh, you got four, n equal to 4 is true because of n is true. n equals to 3 is true. n, n equal to 3 is true is because n equal to 2 is true. n equal to 2 is true because n equal to 1 is true. 
A equal 1 is true is because of A equal 0 is true. Because we already proved that A equal 0 is true. So it goes go on and on and on and on. Forever. Okay? So this is the logic of this proof. This example demonstrates the logic of this proof. Okay? So, yeah. And then you keep going. Okay, forever. Any 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 question on the logic part or not? No. Okay. So let's try another one. Let's try another one. So let's say let's say I ask you a question. Uh, how you add one to three? One to four. One to five. 1 to 6, 1 to 7, 1 to 8, 1 to arbitrary n. How do you give? Can you give a formula? Huh? Add 1 to 3 is what? 6. Add 1 to 4 is what? 10. Can you give a formula? Add 1 up to n. Ah, close, close, close. Is a uh, n times n plus one. Yeah. So, okay. So how how do you prove this? So you start from base case. Okay. Base case is n positive, so n is uh, one. Okay. So one is equal to one plus two over two, which is one. Okay, and then the next is inductive hypothesis. Suppose it is true for um, uh, suppose it works for n, so n to k, and then we want to prove it for n plus one. Okay, we Okay, so let's try. So 2 plus up to uh, k and then up to k plus 1. Okay, so since this part is true for k, so I can use this formula up to k. So meaning the front part I can use inductive hypothesis, which we get k over k plus 1 over 2 plus 2k plus 1 by inductive. Hypothesis. Okay. For the set, I draw this. For the set, I draw this. Okay. And then next, what do you do? You can factor rise. Okay, plus two over. Okay. And then check this formula is correct or not. So if I put k plus one here, here should be k plus one, here should be k plus one plus one, which is k plus two. Okay, this is the right formula. Okay, so this is inductive. Uh, any question? This is the last slide for topic one. After this, we will go to chapter two. Any any question? Any question on this proof by induction? On Any question? Do you have any Yeah, don't be shy, please ask questions. Okay, no question, then we move on.
Okay, chapter two, we will talk about set, set theory and then function and then matrices. Okay, just basic, basic stuff. Because we want to talk about functions, so function is a map between set. So we need to know about set. So what's a set is uh, a set is an unordered collection of objects. Okay, and this object has to be distinct. Okay, they are different. Only different objects we consider in our set. Okay, and then they are called the uh, elements. In elements, or oh, sometimes you will use member. members Okay, then a set contains elements. And then we will write A is in A. <laughs> okay. The element is in the set. Okay. A is element. Okay. So if we say contain, maybe we will use like A this way. Okay. So a contains A. A is in A. So usually we use small uh, letter for elements and then capital letter for set. Yeah. So let's give example. So example one. Is this a set? Is this a set? Yes, no, no, why not? They have the same objects here again. Okay? So we need to have distinct objects. Okay, it's not. But later we'll touch on this kind of set. This is called a multi set. Okay. I think multi set is more useful if you think from the science common points. We'll touch on it later. Okay, second. Uh, what is the set of numbers on the clock? Okay, what's the set of number on the clock? You want to turn one oh, so fast if all the answer already. Our clock is not 12. Not 12. We will learn about modular arithmetic later. So modular arithmetic. Clock is not, not 12. Okay, three. Uh, last week, we already introduced the natural number, integers, uh, rational, real number, complex number. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, number four. Okay, four is quite important. Four is the intervals. Okay, let me write in a new page. So four is the interval. This interval is quite important, you should know. So these intervals. Intervals are, are intervals in the room. So we have a close intervals. Written like this. So, uh, is the number that is in between A and B, and you can include A and B if it is close. If it is open, then it's a number in between A and B. But 
Open the open interval. So you can close one end and then open the other end. And then open the other end, close one end. Okay. So you can guess the definition. And maybe you have different way of writing it if you see it in some uh, book. So uh, you could have this A, B, and then facing the other way, the bracket, and then A, B, and then A, and then B. Okay, this is the intervals. Intervals and then, uh, yeah. Okay. Hey, do you do you, have you wonder why numbers uh, why why real numbers draw like this? Anyone wonder why numbers? Anyone talk about this before? Like number is like one, two, three, four, five, discrete. Right? So do you wonder why like real number can draw as like never thought of this? Huh? Never, none of you think why, but no, you think it's natural. <laughs> huh? Why? Huh? Why? <laughs> why? Huh? No. So, you see, in the integers, right? In the integers, they are one unique apart. Yeah. Supposed to be discrete one. So like you and you, uh, every one of you, okay, is a number one, two, three, four. This is how they create natural number. So they want to count the ship. And my ship is is my ship same as your ship, right? So how to get? Oh, I got fifty ship. I, you got forty nine ships. Okay, so this is how the number come up. Okay, ships. So so these are discrete. And last time we talked about this integer, so you got two directions now, right? So you can go back, go forward. Okay, but how about what are these numbers inside here? Okay, so this number here are those the rational numbers, right? The ratio of the number ratio. So like what we did just now, we said that every every real number has a another real number between it. Okay, I mean. Just now we proved for rational, is it? Or just real? Real number, huh? Okay, real number. But actually, what we did is the integer. We just show it for integer. So, because we just divide by two. And then what you can do is you also can show that every two rational, there's an irrational. Okay. So, these numbers are dense. So, these are dense. Really dense, really dense, really dense. Every every spot you can find a number, every spot you can find a number. That's why these spot all join together become one. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So so you always hear people say real line, real line, real line. They refer to this number line. Real number. Okay, so, so these number are dense. And then if complex, complex we will add another dimension. Mm -hmm. so this is R. Okay. So complex is like R cross R. Okay. Yeah. So in fact, in fact, this is how how these uh, subsets sit sit inside each other, right? So these are. Uh, Okay, I won't, I, won't, I won't tell you what this, and then we will talk about it later. So what I want to say, this is how the numbers sit in between. Okay. So actually, there's a lot of copy of real inside complex, right? So this is another copy of real. So this is another copy of real. This is another copy of real. This is another copy of real. This is how numbers sit together. See, within each other. Okay. 
This is the side story. So, thanks for the definition. So let's see what's the subset is. So a set A is a subset of B. Or uh, in other words, B is a super set of A. If and only if for every A, A in A, A is in B. Okay. Then we say A is a subset of B. Okay. For example, C is a subset of. So the clock number is a subset of N. But National number is not a subset of the clock number. Why? Okay, show me, show me. Show me the negation of this statement. Right. Show me the negation of this statement. Yeah, they exist. Yeah. Yeah, there exists a number A in A such that A is not in B. Yes, so you can take the thing in N, but the thing not in N. Okay. So you also mentioned about the big small concept. Yeah, that's right. So later we'll touch on the cardinality of the set. So how many objects are, how many elements are in the set? Okay, later we'll touch on that. And um, subset, subset, subset. Okay, one more thing actually have to do before this. So this one, like move it down first. Okay, so like, like what we do in the logic, if we have two propositions, we want to see whether the two are logically equivalent or not. So in set set theory, we also want to know if we have two sets, whether they are the same or not. So when are they the same? So two sets are equal. Okay. If only if they have the same element. Okay. So in other words, it's what? So therefore, A and B are A equal to B, if and only if, for every X, X in A, if and only if X is in B. We need to show that if X in A is in A, then X is going to have to be in B. If X is in B, X has to be in A. Okay. Okay. So, for example, for example, so let's see. This A is one, two, three, and then B is three, two, one. So, are they the same? Huh? Yes. Okay. So, we want to prove that A equals to B. So, we use the direct proof. Okay. Direct proof, we just prove on the definition. So, definition is what? For every x, x in A, I have to show that x is in B. So how many x is in A? For three, okay? So for all of these, you need to show that one, two, three are all in B. But you see that A, one is in A, one is in B. Two is in A, two is in B, three is in A, three is in B. So you go from here to here, right? Oh, let me write it down, spell it out. So x in A and then for every x, x is in A. Okay. okay. So similarly, the, the other 
correction. Then what it writes x is in p in the axis. Okay. Okay. Next, 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 next. next. Okay, next theorem. Okay, let's see the theorem. So we want to justify that this subset consent is not something uh, empty. So every set has at least two subsets. Okay, namely one is empty set. Oh, empty set. I haven't introduced what is empty set. I I skipped the whole slide. Sorry. Okay, let's introduce what is empty set. Ah, empty set, there's one story with empty set. Okay, I have to introduce empty set first. So, empty set. Okay, empty set. Or oh, now set. So, we were denoted by P. So, what's empty set? So, empty set has no elements. Okay, nothing inside. We call it an empty set. Empty set. So, so last time, remember I told you about the piano axiom reading of the natural number, natural number seven zero one two three four five six. So actually, they build it using this empty set. So empty set zero. Okay, the set of containing the empty set is one. Okay, so the the element of Element of set not less can be set as well. Okay, so set become an element. Okay, okay. Uh, for example, for example, for example, okay, this one a side example. So you could have this thing. So you could have a set of this number here. Okay, so. This means the natural number becomes the element of the set, but one is not an element of the set. Okay, so your element becomes set. Okay, similar here. So this is the set of empty set. And then what is two? Two is the set containing zero and one. The set containing the empty set. And the second thing like this. Yeah. So can you guess what is three? Huh? What is three? Can anyone guess what is three? So three should contain zero. One. So you can keep going on, keep going. So they build out this number system using this set theory, and then actually one is the successor of zero, and then two is the successor of one, and three is the successor. And then all the plus minus can use this successor function to become. But this one is out of the scope of this uh, class. So just let you see what's going on. Okay. Uh, let's come back to here. So every set X has at least two subset, namely empty set and X. Okay. Maybe after proving this, we will stop here. So let's prove. So this proof is also a direct proof. So it just show that we want to show what we want to show P e is a subset of X and X is a subset. Okay. So um, we show the first one first. So we show that to show empty set is a subset of X, we need to show what we need to show for every X. X in the P implies X is in X. Okay. So 
Is this true? Is this true? S is in empty set. Does empty set has any element? No. no. So this one is false. False implies anything is true. So the whole thing true. Okay. So uh, let me spell it out. Since B has no elements, S implies T is always false. Okay. So the statement is always true. So in this case, we also say that uh, the statement is vacuously true. Vacuously true. Vacuously true. Okay. So because the assumption is false, then the whole thing should be true. Okay. And then should I put an exercise? The exercise. Next, show that uh, X is a subset of itself, which is to show that for every X, X in X implies X in X. Okay. Yeah. This one again. Okay. Uh, any question or not? Any question before we... Take a break and then we're going to quizzes. Eleven. Any any question? No. Okay, let's take a break. Hey, this part. Huh? This part. This part. Uh, this part. You said the empty set can get six foot B inside. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, we need to increase like this. But you just put another this one. Okay, pull another. Uh, yeah. Like this. Yes. Now the pattern is like you include the previous guy. So this is a set. So this is empty set. This set of empty set. This is a set of this one plus this one. And this one is a set of one plus. Like, like, like one is one plus zero. So we, Two is. So we take this one as this one now. So it implies the inside. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Special. So one is zero plus one. Two is one plus. One, one. plus. We add an additional ah. like a set outside. Uh, yeah. Very special. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 各级 
是这样的问题。嗯，是，然后呢？然后呢？然后然后好像没了，我看不见。然后有什么问题？然后那问题。所以说这样说是对的，是吗？这样说这个部分是对的，是吗？啊，对。然后呢？哦，那那那就这个问题了。OK， 所以这个是什么问题？这个别人看不懂，这个是 OK。这个是什么种？呃，哪种证明法？然后为什么要这么证？就是之前那个。OK， 这这个证明法就是这个，就是这个，就是这个。OK， 这个是你一开始有的东西。哦、oh.。这个是你证出来的东西，用这个。用这个，其实它有一个 P， 你好像抄漏一个 P， 抄漏了，对，它有一个 P， 对，它有一个 P， 然后你的顺序有点不太对，就先 P 到 AP， 然后再 AQ 了过后才有飞 P， 虽然不是很重要，但是它会提醒你怎么拿到这个飞 P， 嗯 ，OK， 然后。这个飞 Q 是和这句在一起的，所以所以它是一整句飞 Q implies P and not Q。好，那我应该是抄漏了个两个东西。对，然后，对，然后，然后这一个可以解释为什么我们可以拿到 Q， 就是说，嗯，这种证明方法，对，并不是唯一有这种指定的公式，而是通过这两个条件找出。各种各样的矛盾，比如说像这种，然后来证明，呃，这个是错误的，然后证 Q 是处的，是吗？对 ，OK OK， 大概懂。对对对对对对对对对对对对。透过透过假设 Q 是错的，然后你找到矛盾，然后将 Q 等于零。对因为在考试考题可以选的内容，没有没有，上上两个星期，对，前两个星期，对
Uh, okay, now I want you to close all your electronic devices and then face down your screen or close your laptop. Face down your screen. Uh, I want you to be honest. I don't, to, I don't want to make a lot of noise while you show me that yourself. Okay. Face down your screen and then close your laptop. Okay, for each row, each column, I want the first guy, first person, can volunteer to count how many students uh, in your column or rows, and then tell me this row, row by row. Tell me, and then you come here and collect the number of quizzes. And then when, once you take the quiz, don't start first, and then I will give you uh, instructions. Eh? Okay, one, two, one, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four, 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 just four person. Seven. Huh? Seven? No, no, no. This this four row. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. How many? Fourteen. 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 Fifteen. You? Seventeen. Fifteen. Seventeen. Okay, you can read the question first, but you don't start yet. Don't start yet. No discussion on the quizzes, huh? only you yourself. Okay, you can read, but don't start first. Okay, so in case you don't understand the question, right, I put two definitions here. Okay, so actually those are two restaurants. But what is the restaurant is not important, but yes, yeah, I put two definitions. And then there's some typo here. So typo one is at the hints for 1.2 in the first question because previously there are more questions inside this quiz. I remove it. So, and then second, you have to show the task 2.1, right? Are logically equivalent using a truth table. I want you to draw truth table to show whatever logically equivalent you think. And then third question, a uh, third typo is uh, question 1.3 worth 20. It doesn't add up to 100. Okay. So we will start now 1103 and then 1118. We will collect the paper. 1118, 15 minutes. We can start now. And hey, no discussion and why got some. No discussion. A big warning is uh, you go out. Of this room, you forget the problem. Okay? Don't disseminate this question because there are still COVID positive students and also visa problem students that have a take quiz.
has meaning slam on. Please remember to write down your name and see the ID.
three more minutes. I don't know what you do. So, you do. Last one minute. Okay, please pass your test to the front. And then just now who pass the the first first person, please tell me to count to get the correct number. Okay. Okay, after you hand in your quiz, you can start with your tutorial question and then we will discuss tutorial question at 11.35. Correct. Okay, can you help me check whether it's the correct number or not? 17. Uh, 17. Okay. okay. Correct. <laughs> check, check. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, while you are doing, maybe I can share some uh, creative answer here. So I think that this class got more creative answer than the feedback class. Uh, I won't discuss the answer yet because you have students haven't taken the class, uh, take the quizzes. So make sure you go out this room, you forget the problem today, okay? Okay, I, let me share some. If you want to do tutorial, you can keep, keep doing, but uh, someone here say that I don't know how you link my uh, battle to the sales of uh, KFC and Drumstick. Uh, you use the sale to test on uh, its first of two of us. And the other, the other guy, I don't know why, talking about uh, Drumstick, you say you want to join scuba driving club. <laughs> I don't know why suddenly got school. And then uh, oh that's one guy, I think two guys suggested how to test how to test whether is which one is good. Since test is hard to quantify, we can measure it with the number of people preferring one over the other. Okay, good, very good. Suggest me how to test the proposition. We can hold a test, invite people down the street to test both the same. If the percentage of people who like KFC is higher than okay. Uh, oh, this one, oh, this one really interesting. Uh. KFC's drumstick is better than Mama only if it is the weekend. Okay, I think something wrong with the grandma, but but I'm not sure your post is true or not. I need to check out. Uh. Only if weekend, uh, Okay, okay. Next time I go weekend. 
Oh, and then this guy changed my better to cheaper. Oh, so cheaper means better for you, is it? Can she provide cheaper drumstick? Okay. So normally in tests, I don't change my adjective, but I will accept this, this quiz. And someone changed my better to delicious. Okay, <laughs> okay 1.3, based on different customer, the proposition I met may be false. <laughs> yeah, you should tell me when is it false, not, not tell me. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that was yeah. okay. Okay, so this question only can uh, discuss after I give back the marking mark one. Okay, and I have to wait for the online person people. Okay, let's see what we have. So one point six point twenty. If x is positive real, then x square is positive real. Implies that a square is positive real, then a is positive real, which is false, right? Because p implies q is not logically equivalent to q implies q. Okay. And then next, if x square is not equal to zero and x is in real, then s is not zero. If x is in real and x is not zero, then a is zero. So they are the same. They apply to each other because you just swap p and q and q plus q and p. Permission. Okay. 
DVD mode. And then 1.6524, last week we produced a counter example for this statement. So they try to prove it and there's some mistake in this argument. So making this argument not valid. So where is the part is wrong? So all cannot deduce either of them. Okay. All cannot deduce either of them. Similarly for QC, you cannot deduce. Okay. Only n. If it is n, then you can deduce either of them. Okay. All cannot. And then for this one, if you work it out, you should use the identities and then I will put this solution out and then you can try and compare with mine. And then you should work out what law I've used. Okay, like just be lazy. So in the test, in the test, you should state uh, what law you have used. And I will provide this one identity table. I will provide the table one. So about the item total, uh, commutativity, and then associativity, in case you can't remember. But I won't provide this one. This one you have to remember. So this one you need to remember. This one. Okay, P implies Q, implies not P or Q. Okay. The implication table I will give. If I only give the uh, the algebra algebra table. Okay. Um next, okay, proof question. So proof that the product of two odd integers is odd. So use direct proof. Direct proof you just compute the product and then this is actually similar to the s square s square is odd in, uh, wait oh this is the other this is the converse if m is odd then m square is odd okay. so you can do it for integer uh even also even number also okay exercise uh, try exercise try observe uh, exercise okay Next, if n is okay, this one I rub it off first. So if n is integer and Sn plus two is even, then n is even. Okay. So I put a and b here. So I produce two proof. Actually, from this proof, you should also can learn that what kind of method I'm using. Okay. So for example, I suppose that n is odd. Okay. So this is the result, n is even. So meaning I get the not q here. Okay. Then I conclude that s n plus two is odd. So this is contra positive. Okay. Not q implies not not q implies not q. How about this one? This one I start with n is odd. The result is odd. Or the result, yeah, the result is wrong. And then also start with the assumption is true and then i go 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 and i get that sn plus two is odd so i get not p so this one is contradiction okay so the question asks you to use two way to prove the same statement yeah okay next Okay, next, uh, prove that m squared equals to n squared if only if m equals to n or m equals to minus n. So, so going this way, I think it's easier, the backward way, because you just assume and then you multiply them. Okay. You assume and you multiply and then you see that they are correct. And then the forward way may be a bit harder, so you can factorize and then you use the high school method to see that it's n minus n or n minus n. Okay, next show by cases. So show that 10 is not a square of a positive integer. So how you do it by cases, you just do it for cases that square less than n and greater than n. So if it is less than 3, all the square is just less than 10. And then when it is square than 4, the square is 16, which is greater than 10. So none of them will reach 10. Okay, so it's not a square of a positive integer. 
Uh, proof or disproof may be harder, this kind of question, because you need to convince yourself either it's true or either it is false. So if two rational numbers, so you take their product, must it, must it be rational? No, because I already showed you that if we take a uh, square root 2 is irrational, but the power is rational, the uh, base number is also rational. Okay. Rational number is the number that can be expressed in terms of fraction. Okay. And then once the supplement question 38. So I think it's uh, if, if a cube is what is it? What's the question? Yeah. What's the question? Anyone got the question? If even or what? What's the question? Is this the question? Now, what was the question? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the proof that if x is irrational, then x is irrational. Ah, irrational. Okay. okay. So, my method here is to use the control positive. Because irrational was, I didn't give you the definition of irrational. I only give you the definition of rational. So you should start from rational. So that means you can consider the contrapositive. Let this be a rational. Yeah. If it is rational, then it's just m over m. Then this sum m m. Okay. And then you take the cube. Obviously, it's still a rational. Yeah. So contrapositive is easier in this. Okay, next. Okay, next is the um, induction question. So uh, let's say I take three consecutive integer and then I add them together. Then I got this formula here. Okay. So since this is working for all the positive integer, so n should start from one. Okay. So you check one first. So one, two, three. So this one, so one, two, three, so stop at one, two, three, and then one, two, then stop one, and then it's correct or not? Yeah, it's correct. So because this cancel this, so it's two times three, two times three, then, which is true. Okay, so base case is true. So we proceed with the inductive hypothesis and inductive step. So inductive hypothesis assume that this formula is true for some x, some k. Then we want to show it for the next k plus one, okay? K plus one. So you do it up to k plus one. And then you see that the k plus one term contain the k, k part. So you can use the inductive hypothesis. Apply this formula and then turn this k part here into the formula using the formula into this form and then you see that a this two actually uh, can be simplified so you do the factorization and then you actually see this formula here so when you put k plus one in okay then you get this uh, k plus one k plus one k plus one k plus one which is plus one plus two plus three plus four which is what you want okay Simple induction proof. And then the next one also. So, oh, this one a bit um, different. So, you want to prove that 3 divide n cubed plus 2, uh, plus 2n. Okay? So, how on earth you can think of this, right? So, let's check for uh, the base case, start from 0. So, when n equals 0, does 3 divide 0? Yes, everything divide 0. Okay, yeah. base case is okay. So inductive hypothesis, suppose it's true for some k, okay? And then we want to prove it for k plus one, okay? So we put k plus one in, okay? But our job to apply inductive hypothesis is to find the k terms out, okay? So this means I need to expand it to get the k terms out, okay? So I expand it, I expand it, and then I pick up the k terms, okay? And then I left with the rest. 
left with the rank. So by inductive hypothesis, this part is divisible by three, right? Yeah, because it looks like this, k, k plus two k. And then the rest, you can factorize the three out, right? So that means this part is divisible by three. So the whole thing is divisible by three. So the K plus one term is divisible by three. So for for all n. This time is divisible by two. Yeah. Mm, any question you want to like me to go through again? Any any question you want me to go through again? I'll pull out this uh, solution on after Thursday class. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So, okay. so the question is to show that a cube is irrational implies that a is irrational, right? Right. But I didn't give you what is the definition of irrational. Right? I gave you a definition of rational. A number is rational if it is um expressed, it can be expressed as a ratio of two integers where n is not equal to m, right? So we start from there. So we can try the strategy contrapositive. Okay? So that's mean, that's mean not, so this one is p, this one is q, so we try to prove not q implied, not p. So not q is, a is, so suppose a is rational, okay? So by definition, a is equals to, By definition, okay. So by definition, a is equal to n over n for some m and n in the z and n not equals to zero, right? Then you can check what is a cube now, right? So a cube is m times n and m times n times n, times n. right? So it's the m cube over n, which is another red uh integer over an integer. So it's rational. Okay. So we have proven not Q implies not P, which implies. Any question? Another, another question you want me to go through? Any question? Okay, before we leave, uh, before we dismiss, once you step out this room, forget the quiz problem. Okay. Cannot discuss outside this room. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. What thing, huh? MSD, did she email me or not? She should email me. Ask, ask, ask her to email me. I will collect. Huh? Oh, this one. Huh? Okay, okay, okay. I will collect a list of SMPs and then ask them to do at once and then, then do the quiz. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 你可以再给我解释一下，二十八到二十八。在哪里呢？这个，呃，你是了吗？我是。